Good morning. I am the Reverend Eliasin Rosario Cruz, and I welcome you to this morning prayer service from St. John's Episcopal Church in Snohomish, Washington, on today, December 6th of the year 2020, which marked the second Sunday in Advent of our liturgical year B. This is a time of waiting. Advent is that time of waiting and longing and preparation. And as we move toward the darkest day of the year, coming up here in late December, we know that light is to come. Um, we know that the days will grow brighter after then. Um, and we prepare ourselves. We open our hearts and prepare ourselves for the Messiah, for the coming of the kingdom of God, swaddled in baby wraps. So I invite that you find your bulletin this morning, either the one that was mailed to you if you're in our mailing list or emailed to you if you are in our electronic list, um, or the one that is, you can find also uh, an email, um, not an email, a bulletin that is attached to a link to this video. And you can join us in prayer. More than just watching, we pray by doing. Episcopalians, we are pragmatic people. We do things. We do things with our hands. We do, we do things with our body. We pray. We gather together. It's more than just a mental exercise. So I pray that you use the bulletin to join in the prayers with the many others who are praying these prayers together. We will begin our service of Advent in a moment by lighting our Advent wreath. Uh, but now we take a moment of silence to center ourselves to recognize that this is a holy moment, that we are in holy ground. We can begin our prayers with the lighting of the Advent wreath. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall I see it together. Let us pray. Open our eyes to see your light that it might lead us on path to your city of peace. Amen. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us confess our sins against our God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with a whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will. 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Holy One, thank you for coming to us anew this day. Prepare our hearts and awaken our love for you as we discern your call within us. May we join with you in making level the path for all people. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him and that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. From the Gospel according to Mark, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. 
John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we talk about Advent, Advent is that season where we're talking about uh, the God that is coming, right? And so here's the thing about what that Advent reminds us of that God is always coming toward us. God never turns God's back on us. God's always coming toward us. We are called to move toward God. And so we are to recognize and see how God is coming toward us. God is coming toward us always in movements toward justice. Well, you move towards God. And we move towards God by joining God in the movement toward justice, right? And so Advent is, reminds us that God is always, always coming uh, toward us. And not esoterically, but in movements toward justice, toward freedom, which always are these perfect reflections of God's love. Our task is to go toward God. That's the Advent season to me. That's what it reminds us of that we have people that must be going toward the God that is coming toward us. And we do that through acts of justice. And what do we do when we get to God? What do we, what, when we go toward the Well, you know what? Here's the thing. There was a commercial a long time ago when I'm a baby boomer, uh, when they first introduced uh, instant soup. And a little kid outside said, is it soup yet? Guess what? It's not soup yet, because as long as there's one person, one person, that cannot, that does not understand the justice and feel the justice of God, one person that is not free to live fully into the sacredness of who God has created them to be, well, guess what? We ain't there yet. And so it's almost a moot question. Just keep going until you get there, until everybody can say, ah, I'm free. And so we aren't there yet. Beloved in Christ, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. In the beginning, it is dark, cool, and quiet. And we ask you, invite us into your presence, O Christ. We do not know your works, Holy One, yet still we ask you, invite us into your presence, O Christ. 
We look to the rising sun and trust that you invite us into your presence, O Christ. Today, we pray for God's presence and strength for families and teachers during this uncertain school year, for our sister Linda Troy, for military families of those abroad and returning, for refugees and those who assist them, for Steve, for June, for Margaret, for Julia. We pray for Riva, for Joyce, for Louis, for Teresa. We pray for families bereaved by the impact of coronavirus. We pray for successful diagnosis and treatment for Bill, for Chris, for Julie, for Janelle, for Karen, for Tom, and for those who are suffering the coronavirus. We ask God's guidance for those seeking employment, for families dealing with addictions, and for families and individuals struggling with daily impact of the pandemic. We ask for healing for Eleanor and Lynn, for Lynn and Dorothy, for Christina and Patsy, for Kelly, for Dottie, for Judy and Darlene. Remember the departed, those who have died in recent weeks by COVID-19 or those who have died because related to the pandemic. Remember Bonnie Killian and remember Aaron Olson's mom. We give thanksgiving since God is with us and we are never alone in our darkness. We give thanksgiving for the many ways, for the many who have worked this year at St. John's and giving in many ways to their time, talent, and treasure who have worked for the restoration of our building and to keep our community connected while we are away from each other. We give thanks for every opportunity to show a smile in action, even when it's covered through masks. And I invite now your intercessions and thanksgivings presented to the Lord who knows your heart. O oh God, you are our shepherd and we need nothing more. We rejoice in your presence with us in all of creation. Let us say together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed your warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet you with joy, the second coming of Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of hope, you call us from exile of our sin with the good news of restoration. You build a highway through the wilderness. You come to us to bring us home. Comfort us with the expectation of your saving power. Make known in Christ our Lord. Amen. And beloved in Christ, may he whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make, a stead, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. And the blessing of your loving God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. And now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Yeah.